Hi guys, in this video I'll be doing an in-depth review on Arteza's expert coloured pencils. Just for transparency, Arteza were kind enough to send me this set to review, but rest assured that I'll be completely honest about the product and my opinions. So first off, taking a look at the packaging. This set comes in a lovely tin with a hinged lid. I'm always happy when products arrive in a tin, as it's an excellent way of protecting and storing coloured pencils. As for the information on the front, there's very little to glean other than that they are artist quality and they boast rich and vibrant colours. I like the modern and understated packaging design, although in my opinion an inspirational artwork to show off the possibilities of these pencils would have been more exciting than the colourful cross-hatching on the front. Turning over onto the back, and we're greeted with a lot more information. So the packaging claims that these are professional grade artist quality coloured pencils, and that they're brake resistant and have soft and thick leads, and that they offer smooth colour lay down for superior blending and shading, unsurpassably light fast and acid free quality pigments, and that they're ideal for drawing, illustrating and colouring. So as always, I'll evaluate the claims towards the end of the video to see if the product really does live up to these claims. So taking up the bulk of the back, we have a swatch chart which I seriously approve of. The swatches aren't incredibly representative of the colours, but it definitely gives a good impression of the range inside. It also would have been nice to see the light fastness ratings also printed on the back here. And the remaining information is contact information and a guarantee, which is nice to see, and information to show that these pencils conform to American and European standards and regulations, as well as responsible use of wood. So now taking a look inside, the pencils are organised in three layers of plastic inserts. Now something that struck me straight away is just how much these pencils smell compared to other pencils I own. And personally, I don't find it unpleasant. In fact, I find it quite nostalgic, as it smells like the exciting art kits I received when I was small. These pencils do conform to the American and European safety standards for art supplies and toys, so I'm not concerned about their toxicity. But if you are sensitive to smells, then you may want to give this product a miss. The smell has dissipated a little since I first opened them but the smell is certainly quite strong still. The trays are made of a quite cheap and flimsy feeling plastic, but they do the job. Initially, the pencils were organised in a strange way, so I went ahead and put them in a colour order that felt more intuitive to me. The pencils came pre-sharpened to a flat tip, but since unboxing them, I've used them and sharpened them myself. They certainly didn't arrive this sharp. If you'd like to see my first impressions of these pencils, I'll leave a link in the cards in the top right and in the description box down below. But now taking a look at the individual pencils, the build quality of these pencils is excellent. These round pencils feel very solid and are covered in a thick glossy lacquer, including a protective end cap. I've measured the pencil barrels to have a diameter of 7mm and a wonderfully large core size of approximately 3.8mm. Each pencil is printed with silver foil, showing the company's name, the colour name and number, as well as the light fastness ratings of each pencil. Although the foil print is very smart looking, I found that because it's so reflective, on some colours it's a little bit more difficult to read. The colour of the barrel is meant to represent the colour in the pencils, but do take this with a big pinch of salt. End cap or barrel colour is rarely an accurate match to the pencil colour, and that's certainly the case for the majority of pencils in this set. Instead, I find it much more useful to look at the revealed tip of the pencil or refer to a swatch to choose colours. So now taking a look at the properties of the pencils. Starting off with looking at the colours in the range of this set, I think there's a great selection with lots of bright and vibrant colours, as well as some more muted and earthy tones too. On the other hand, I think there are quite a few colours that are very similar to other ones, and as you can see on this black paper, some of the pencils are quite opaque, 
whilst most are semi-transparent or semi-opaque. If you'd like a closer look at these swatch charts, I'll leave a link to my blog post about these pencils in the description box down below. Next, I'll demonstrate how well these colours mix and blend on some different papers. So here I'm creating a little colour wheel using just three colours, which are lemon, fuchsia and peacock blue. And my goal here is to create as smooth a blend as possible, just using the pencils alone. The three papers I have here are our Tezza's watercolour paper, which I figured would be a common purchase along with these pencils. On the right I have some Strathmore toned mixed media paper, which has a smooth vellum finish, but just enough tooth to layer easily with coloured pencil. And in the middle here I have the reverse side of Cants and Mittants, which has a fine grain and is a touch coarser than the Strathmore mixed media paper. The laydown of these pencils is waxy and smooth, and the pigment distributes evenly with no grittiness or random dots of darker pigment. The pencils glide across the paper and feel quite soft in that respect, but they are also firm enough to sharpen to and maintain a fine point. I found that the most effective way of blending colours was to carefully layer using a very light hand and alternating each colour. Because these pencil pigments can't be easily pushed around the paper surface, and as most colours are semi-transparent, I had to be extra cautious with the pressure I applied the colours with, as haphazardly placed lines of one colour couldn't be easily disguised with the next colour. These properties do have their positives though. Transparency and minimal spreading means that you have a high degree of control over your application of colour, such as creating interesting textures and depth. The next test is to see how well these pencils erase. So here I'm using a Tombow Mono Zero eraser and a Derwent Electric eraser to compare. The Tombow Mono offers a lot of control when erasing, but the Derwent Electric eraser requires comparatively little effort. Both do a very good job of erasing the pencil, although the pencil has stained the paper a little, especially at the top of these gradients where the application is heavier. The third test is to see how pigmented and opaque the white pencil in this set is, and as you can see it's not hugely effective on Arteza's watercolour paper, but works best on the Cants and Mittons, owing to the fine and slightly abrasive texture of the paper, which really helps to pull pigment from the pencil tip. The white pencil also works well on the Strathmore paper, I think the fact that this paper is toned helps too, although the vellum finish texture of this paper isn't quite as grabby as the Cants and Mittons. Now moving on to the next round of tests, I have some roughly coloured gradients I want to try using some different blending mediums on to see what works best with these pencils. First up we have Zestit Pencil Blend, which is a liquid solvent made from orange turpentines and is designed to be used with coloured pencil. Mineral spirits or paint thinners will offer similar results. The pencils dissolved very well with the solvents and were able to be spread around to create even coverage. That being said, I didn't like how they worked on Arteza's paper, as the deep and regular linear pattern made it difficult to obtain homogeneous colour in both the valleys and on the peaks of the paper's tooth. Next we have the Derwent Blender Pen, which uses alcohol to dissolve the waxy binder of the coloured pencils. The Blender Pen works with these pencils, but isn't particularly easy to use. It does push the colours around a bit, smoothing out the blend, but the waxy coloured pencil seems to stick to the nib and then make it difficult to apply the alcohol. And finally we have a blending pencil, and I'm using the Derwent blending pencil as I found that it's the softest of the ones I've tried. The pencil does a great job of pushing the pigments into the valleys of the paper's tooth, and works really well with these pencils. The last little test is to see how well these pencils layer, and this will also give an idea of the level of pigmentation, the lay down, and how waxy these pencils are. I start off by filling the whole rectangle with a layer of coloured pencil using the lightest hand possible, then I keep layering using this pressure until I'm no longer having an effect on the intensity of colour, when I'll then start increasing my pressure. 
The amount of layers you can distinguish and achieve will vary from person to person, but 10 layers for me suggests that these pencils offer a reasonably good level of control. I did find that the intensity of colour was weaker on the Strathmore paper, but that paper offered better control of even coverage during the first few layers. So as you can see, paper choice influences the techniques that you use and the results that you can achieve. Now that the solvents have fully dried, I'll take a closer look at the test sheets again. As you can see, the finish of these pencils is highly glossy due to the high wax content. These pencils have a strong tendency to create wax bloom, which can show up as a glossy and uneven streakiness in the surface, or as a milky or powdery white coating on the pencil surface. I don't think Arteza's watercolour paper is a good choice for coloured pencil, as the heavy regular texture makes it very difficult to create smooth and even coverage, especially when blending or if you want to apply thin layers of coloured pencil. Now moving on to the demo, I've created a quick sketch of a tiger on the reverse side of some cans and mitons in a light warm grey colour. From my experiments, I found that these pencils performed the best on paler colour paper as they aren't opaque or pigmented enough to offer bright results on the darker paper. And for the way that I work, I found the mitons to perform the best out of the papers that I tried. For many of my previous coloured pencil reviews, I've used pastel mat to demonstrate the product on. However, as these pencils are most certainly budget friendly, I decided to test them on a paper that I'd also consider kind on the wallet. So I've started out by blocking in some of the highlights and shadows, and as the tiger has a lot of blue in his white fur, I've decided to put some light base layers of this in as well. As I work, I mix lots of different colours into his fur to create depth and interest, and I really focus on building up contrast. I think I use all of the browns in this collection on his orange fur, as well as all of the peachy colours, as well as some blues, greys and yellows too. These pencils layer very well, they mix nicely with the mineral spirits, and I can easily work over the top of these blended layers to refine colours and detail. These pencils have very quick laydown. At 24 by 24 centimeters or 9.5 by 9.5 inches, this piece is quite a bit larger than what I'd usually create. However, I managed to complete this piece in only three hours, but the 15 by 15 centimeter tiger I completed in a video a few months back, which I'll link to in the description and the cards, took about double this length of time. That being said, I do feel like some of the speed was due to the fact that I didn't go quite as detailed in this piece as I did in the previous tiger, as most of the colours weren't opaque enough to stand out on top of the darker layers underneath. So in that sense, I was very limited to how much fur detail I could apply. The laydown was also sped up because the pencils are waxier, and the paper I used here is less abrasive than the pastel mat that I used for the previous tiger drawing. For that drawing, I had to apply a lot more layers to achieve a smooth finish, whereas here it took comparatively few. So this could be seen as a positive or a negative. Although the process is quicker with these waxy pencils, there is also less room for lots of layers to build up depth and subtleties in the colour. Something I do want to mention though is that the white was surprisingly opaque. Most white pencils are disappointing, but this one was great. It even stood out okay over the top of lots of darker layers, and worked especially well if I dipped the sharpened tip into a little solvent before applying it, and I did this for some of the details and whiskers at the end of the progress of the piece. I used a crank sharpener to get a fantastically long tip to my pencils, and they also do well to maintain this sharp point. This makes them an excellently versatile pencil, good for coverage and good for detailing. It also appears that the core is glued all the way down the length of the pencil too, as although I've tried, the wood doesn't peel or flake away from the core. This will prevent breakage, especially if the pencils are dropped, as then the core shouldn't just fall out the end of the pencil. This range comes in two different sizes, the 48 set and the 72 set. 
And as for the cost of these sets, excluding any shipping costs, on Arteza's website, the 48 set sells for £15 or $27 US dollars, and the 72 set sells for £24 British pounds or $33 dollars. Prices appear to be around the same on Amazon and on other websites, but I always recommend checking different sites out, as prices can fluctuate by a few pounds or dollars each. Moving on to a pet peeve of mine, I explained this in more detail in the first impressions video, but the original price for these products on Arteza's website appears to be overinflated and not representative. As far as I know, the pencils have never been sold at this hugely expensive original price, so don't be fooled by the sales tactic. Although these pencils are good value for money at the prices I previously mentioned. So going off the prices these sets actually sell for, the pencils work out to cost roughly 40 pence or cents each, which is very inexpensive. Unfortunately, these pencils don't currently sell open stock, so if you run out of your favourite colour, your only choice is to purchase the whole set again. As for light fasteners ratings, I managed to get a definitive answer from Arteza. The lower the amount of pluses on the pencil barrel, the more light fast the pencil is. This follows the ASTMD standard rating system for light fastness. A 1 or a 2 is acceptable for work produced for display and should last at least 50 years under museum conditions. In this set of 72, 31 score a 1 or a 2. And if you're interested in seeing how the ratings of these coloured pencils compare to other brands, I'll leave a link to a blog post about it in the description box down below. Something that I thought I'd mention is the way that the colours are named. They all have quite poetic names, which I find to be quite memorable and descriptive. I think the choice of names is particularly useful for newer artists, compared to the more complicated and overwhelming names that high-end products often have. For example, moss is a bit more relatable than chromium green oxide. Moving on to evaluating the packaging claims. So the tin stated that these are professional grade and artist quality. Moreover, Arteza rank their expert range to be artist grade, whilst their premium products are considered student grade. But I don't entirely agree that these are professional or artist grade supplies. I think that the pigmentation is on the low end of being professional or artist grade, and then there's also the issue that more than half the set isn't deemed to be highly light fast. I would personally consider these to be on the high end of student grade, which certainly isn't bad given their cost. That being said, this is a purely personal opinion, and there are no real objective requirements for something to be considered professional or artist grade. Moving on, the packaging claims that the leads are thick, which I can certainly agree with given that I measured them to be 3.8mm, which for a 7mm pencil is very good. They are also relatively soft, although just a touch firmer than other artist grade pencils that are branded soft, which for me is certainly not a bad thing, as a bit of firmness helps for fine detail. I found them to be very break resistant and the tips very rarely snapped as I worked. Like most colour pencils, they do produce some dust as you colour, so make sure to pick that up with a kneaded eraser as to avoid smudging it onto your paper. Looking at the next set of claims, these pencils do indeed offer smooth colour laydown and do work well for blending and shading too, and they are great for drawing, illustrating and colouring like the tin says. The final packaging claim I'd like to cover and be a bit nitpicky about is the claim that these pencils are unsurpassably light fast. I dislike the term as I found it to be easily misinterpreted by myself and others. Although it might sound like it, this phrase doesn't mean that these pencils have the best light fastness ratings compared to other brands. Instead, I believe this term technically means that Arteza don't offer a more light fast pencil than this, that the scores are unsurpassable or unbeatable. And this is true on a technicality. The premium coloured pencils that Arteza offer share the same range of colours and the same ratings. Anyway, unsurpassably light fast is a phrase many companies use, and perhaps I'm in the minority who find it misleading, so I don't think I can be too critical of this claim. But I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments section down below. 
and finishing up by summarising with some pros and cons. Overall, I think these pencils are absolutely ideal for practice work. They are fantastic value for money, have excellent build quality, as well as great pigmentation and laydown. And in the 72 set, there is also a selection of colours that are light fast enough to create work to display and sell to, which is impressive seeing as the sets are so affordable, and many budget brands don't give their colours light fastness ratings at all. However, if you're only interested in using the light fast colours, then you'd be discarding over half of the pencils in the collection. I think Arteza should have made the light fastness rating system easier to understand by providing information on or in the tin, or at least on their website. I was only able to find a clear answer after directly contacting the company. What's more is that the light fastness scale for some of their other products also uses pluses, but the ratings go in the opposite way, which is unnecessarily confusing. And just some minor issues for me, I feel like some of the colours are very similar to each other, so although the colour range is wonderful and versatile, I can't help but feel that the colour range could have been even broader. It also would have been real benefit to see these pencils available in smaller sets and open stock. And my last little complaint is the smell, which, whilst it doesn't bother me, I know it's strong enough to cause an issue for others. So who do I recommend these pencils for? I'd recommend this range for students and hobbyists particularly, or to any artist that may want to try out colour pencil without breaking the bank. The fact that these pencils aren't available open stock also solidifies my opinion that these pencils are an excellent gateway coloured pencil, as it seems natural to then upgrade to a higher quality pencil line which does offer single pencils open stock, as repurchasing whole sets to replace a handful of colours isn't an efficient way of maintaining a collection. If you're an artist with an expansive collection, I wouldn't recommend purchasing this set purely for the light fast colours, as their pigmentation is likely outcompeted by what you already own, although these Arteza Expert pencils are great for sketchbook studies. So here's my finished piece, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I can honestly say I'm super impressed with the performance of these pencils and their value for money. I'd love to hear what you think about these pencils, whether you've tried them out, or if you're planning on buying them. And if you have any questions, leave them down below in the comment section, as that's where I respond the fastest, and you might also get some help from another friendly viewer. Thank you very much for watching, if you found this video helpful or interesting, please leave it a like. Don't forget to subscribe if you'd like to stay up to date with my future arty videos. Hope you have a lovely week and I'll see you in the next video.